Baby, how many times have you been up here? I try my best to go up uh, every time I visit Eretz uh, Soil. It's, it's important. Like this time I thought I might not make it because Busy, uh, try to get to a mikvah time and so on. Oh, Hashem, I learned only from Yishai that it was open in the afternoon. So I'm on my way back to to America tonight. Now we're on Harabayas. Uh, a little bit annoyed at the instructions that we get, uh, as if we were aliens and had to be told how to behave on Harabayas. So we know how to behave. We pray on Harabais. That's the proper behavior. That's what Harabais was made for. You hear the, the prayers of Am Yisrael. Shlom HaMelech. Say that's, that's it. This is Shmoa Larino Velatfilo. So uh, we can we can dive in silently and offer prayers uh, for the safety of Eretz Yisrael, especially for for our the soldiers who put their lives on the line and just. Now in Gaza did Baruch Shem successful work, which we somehow feel that the politicians will make sure that's not a real success, but you know, they certainly did what they were supposed to do, Baruch Hashem, and among them were the Bnei Torah, who taught, the, I think, the Israeli community, how much they are part of the community. Like they may dress a little differently by wearing a kippah suga and spending years in the yeshiva, but when it comes down to it, they are Eretz Yisrael. I am loving this moment. I'm here with some of the most incredible people in the most incredible place. And I only ask Hashem that He puts deep thoughts into our hearts. And that I never worry about the fact that we can't pray out loud because my heart's praying. I just, I just hope that we can have the deepest thoughts at this moment. Well, what it is, is you see here they used as paving stone the doorpost. Oh. What's that? Every See? It's a mezuzah. Really? It's where mezuzah was on the doorpost. Shhh. It's not the stone, and they repaved the stone. They used the paving stone. They, took yeah. it, they knocked down Jewish homes. <laughs> Rebbe, what, what significance do you, do you uh, give to that building? Does it mean anything to us? Is it, is it at least a, a keeper on the holy spot? Is it something? According to our tradition, and there's a machlokas, of course, all traditions have machlokas, because history lies, but this seems to be true. That this was the base Kachi Kadosha, the Evan Hashsiya, which, whatever that means, philosophically, theologically, from whence the world began. Kadosh Bohu began the world, he started to put into this world material matter. He began by putting down an Evan Hashsiya, the foundation stone. That's where the Harabayas got its reputation. And that's where Odom Arishon brought Kavonos to Kaddish Baruch That is where Avon brought Yitzhak and Ola Lashem. That's where Noah sacrificed when he came out of the table. Right? And that's where Shomamela Sh- built the base of Mikdash. That's our tradition. Uh, there is no reason to doubt that, that, that tradition. Not that it's essential to us. No tradition is essential to us except to know that Kodesh Baruch made the world and he gave us a Torah. But nevertheless, there is some, a concept which we don't fully understand. It's the concept of Kedusha. Right. And I think, uh, I think this is something that the Rabbanus Horoshis doesn't seem to understand. That Kedusha is not a, emphasized by not going into a place of Kedusha, but rather going into a place of Kedusha properly prepared. The Kohen Godol goes into the base Kachi Kedoshim. If he didn't, base Kachi Kedoshim wouldn't mean anything. Because he goes in, mm. and he's the only one that prepares properly, fine. But Kedusha is defined by how we behave towards Kedusha. The idea of, of, of forbidding this area because 
it, it is an area of Kedusha. It goes counter to what we know about man's relationship to Kedusha. Mm. Man's relationship to Kedusha is because the place is Kadosh, we become more conscious of Kedusha. Mm. But to go ahead and announce there's a place out of bounds because it's Kadosh. It doesn't mean anything. No place is Kadosh. Kedusha comes from man's behavior. We are the only source of Kedusha there is. And the Yom Shru says that every Rosh Chodesh, we bring a korban chatos, a sin offering. So that's what kind of sin offering? What, what is it for? What sin? It says, a sin shlo noda lo bitchiloso velo besofo. I never found out that I did sin. No one ever told me I sinned. So I bring a, a sacrifice, a sin offering for that sin which I know nothing about. Wow. What does that mean? How do you bring a chatos for a sin? Shall know that lo bitchiloso velo besofo. It doesn't make sense. Now, Nezah says something which is relevant also to Ali al He says, where does Kedusha come from? Kaddish Baruch gave up all Kedusha to Am Yisroel. The Kaddish Yisroel, Vazmanim, even gave up the Kedusha of, of the time. We decide when Yom Tov is. Now, last year you were eating uh, Sufganiyot, or rather, no, Hamantashen, when you should have been eating Shmuel Yeah. Why? We moved, we moved it away. Another other shady. So we have all the Kedusha. When a Goy wants to become a Jew, he comes to us and says, give me some Kedusha Shishro, because you have it all. He doesn't go to Kodesh Baruch. We can't talk to God. God says, I'm sorry, I'm all out. I have no Kedusha. I gave it all away to Am Yisrael. We go ahead, we buy a pot, a chon pot. I decide, ah, it's a nice chon pot. I'll give it to the Beis HaMikdash. Suddenly that chon pot becomes Kodosh because I was Magdish to the Beis HaMikdash. How? Because I have all the Kedusha in me. And I can transmit the Kedusha to something, even to inanimate object. It says, but all the Kedusha of Harabayas comes from a composite of Am Yisrael. All the Jews together, their Kedusha makes the Kedusha of Harabayas. Because therefore, if you denigrate a Jew, if you treat a Jew improperly, you don't treat him with Kedusha, then you've stolen from the Kedusha of Harabayas. That's the Chet to which you bring a Chatos and Rosh Chodesh. Every Rosh Chodesh, I don't know, I didn't do a sin that I know about. But certainly there's some Jew I didn't treat with all the kovo that he deserves. And for that I have to bring the sin offering every Rosh Chodesh. Wow. Is that why I mean, the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed because the sin is chinam? Yeah, that, it supports the part of it. Because yeah, the, naturally, the send that, that, that further. Special. But more than that is also to know that this, these stones don't mean anything. They come only, it's our Kedusha. We went ahead, there's one, there's, a, there's a, a, an area in Harabayas that is Kodosh because God said so. Otherwise, the only Kedusha God kept for himself is two Kedushas. The Kedusha of Harabayas and the Kedusha of Shabbos. We can't move Shabbos. can't make it into Sunday or Friday. Right? God said, no, no. Pesach, you can move a whole month if you want. It's okay. But Shabbos don't touch. The Shabbos is mine. So don't, it's all God kept for himself. Just Kedusha, the Yom of Shabbos. The, all the rest he gave over to Am Yisrael. Well. Therefore, when we come here, even the place which is not really Harabayas. And there are places that's not Harabayas at all here. Places that, that, that's landfill. I don't know, where is it? Up in the north, northern section, right? Yeah. Yet, if we come here and daven there, that's the point. They don't want to daven there, because they know if we come and daven here, then we make the place Kodosh. It's great from Shlomo Zaman Arabach, that's how. Alan Shalno Lecha, but also on the Chiyuv of Nila Sasando, I am Kippur. What? What does it mean? What can be the tick of a shoe? He says, God set up the world in four categories. Domeim, Tzomeach, Chai, Medaber. We are the Medaber. We are the spoke, speaking animals. We sit on everything, right? So when we wear shoes, what we do? Shoes made of leather. See, I went ahead. The vegetation used the earth. The animals used the vegetation. And I use the animal, because I am master of the world. Comes Kodesh Baruch and says, Shalom Olechem Aglecha. When you talk to me, you're not the master of the world. Don't you wear shoes that steps on the earth. You're talking to me, I'm the master of the world.
Rebbe, some people uh, get very uh, sad when they come here because they see the destruction and they see the Arabs walking around. But I can't help myself. I always, uh, I always feel very happy. I just get a good feeling in my heart. It wells up. It's not something I do consciously. I just feel very happy. There's a, yeah, there's a, there's a historical view and a historical psyche also. This Bosham is what allowed us to survive. One look back at our history, we have a very sad history. Everybody hates us. Right. Everybody wants to kill us. Right. right? Then I come up here, I realize <laughs> last generation couldn't come here. Right. They couldn't 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 come here. Right? And I can come here now. Right? Last generation <laughs> didn't had to come for the wailing wall. To me it's not a wailing wall, it's a place where you make simchas. Right. No one's crying there. Right. This is, of course, that, that change is very critical. You have to thank the Rebbein Shalom for that. That's, that's a chazdei Hashem that it is that way. But the main entrance to Beit HaMikdash was on the east. Because it says, the Rambam explains, that when, I, when, the, when Shlomo Melech built Beit HaMikdash, he may actually he announced a battle against Avodah Zarah. And many people were worshipping the sun. Comes Shlomo Melech and says, the Beit HaMikdash is from east to west. The more west you're going, the holier you're going. The Kodesh HaKodesh is on the west. So that the sun itself is actually bowing down to HaKodesh Baruch Hu. HaShamayim, Ushmei HaShamayim, Lecham Ishtachavim. So that Kodesh Baruch Hu, so the sun itself is actually bowing down to HaKodesh Baruch Hu. Now the main entrance to Beit HaMikdash was therefore from east to west. Also because on the, on the eastern side was the Ezrat Nashim. Now the Ezrat Nashim, we have to understand, was not a place only for women. It was a place where and every time people would, would, the people would gather, it would be in Ezrat Nashim. For instance, on uh, Sukkot, there was a Simchat Beit HaShoeva that would take place inside uh, Ezrat Nashim. Or once every seven years, they had the Mamad Hakil. It was also inside the Ezrat Nashim. Here we'll see just a picture of it right away. Simchat Beit HaShoeva, we see all the people gathering. It says the big rabbis had torches and they juggled them. And it says that on... Uh, Simchat Beit HaShoeva on the Hakel. They showed the Mechitza also? Yeah, they had the, yeah, the Mechitza on the, On Hakel, the men would be on the bottom, the women closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu on top, and the king would be standing in the center, and he would actually be uh, reading, the, reading the Torah in front of all the people. All the way from the Beit HaKadosh. You have to understand no? that here. You have to pick up your hands higher. higher like that. Like okay, that. Okay. Exactly. that would be the way. And that's it. Right. And now, yeah. Yeah. basically, yeah. The, the Kedusha would be coming from the Kodesh Kodashim. It says that the Kodesh Kodashim, the... Can I take a piece for this? Uh, wait. Uh, Jamal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. I use that to make a makro for the put on the head of a chosen. Uh -huh. I put it in my self cleaning oven and becomes ashes. Is it in order because we have um, we're not allowed to have eitzim up here? No, here there's another reason for it. It's also to have an eitz and a an and arabayas. So I feel I do something by taking a piece off. The mitzvah, Mashiach will come and get the rest off here. Amen. Discussing with um, my previous Rosh Hashiva in Sfat, yeah, Rav Benayahu Bruner, uh, he uh, and we were talking, but he said that there's no concept really of waiting for the Mashiach to do some kind of a mitzvah or an action. No, we don't. We don't have a limitation. No, no, concept. No, the only limitation that was was that mentioning among Subis, Shlo Yalu Bachoma. That's what the Satma have, 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 have modified into an isu, that, that we're not supposed to go ahead and attack uh, the, the occupants of Eretz soil in order to drive them out. Now until the, after the last Choven, 
wait for Kaddish Bochu to give us signs that it's okay. So we, therefore, no Allah Bachoma, we didn't go ahead and, and send out uh, uh, terrorists to throw bombs and, and force force out to soil. Uh, the Arabs should flee uh, the way they're trying to do to us now. We did it the hard way. We, we, we had little pushkis of JNF and we collected money and we bought pieces of Eretz soil. Wherever a, a Jew lived in Eretz soil was our property. We paid hard cash for it. And, and the Arabs were happy to, to sell it to us. They had no other so source of income. They sold us pieces of Eretz soil and now they want it back. When they, had, when, when they went ahead and attacked us, and we, Bezal Sashem, were able to drive them off, then we follow national, international law. When you're attacked by an enemy, and then the enemy is defeated, any property, any geography that was transferred during the war becomes yours. That's to the victor belong the spoils. Only when it comes to Jewish victory, there are new rules that put in. The Jew can never be allowed to be a victor.